This is spineless. He is a Sukumimus. However, he is by far an adult. No, he is but a juvenile. You might be wondering, why is the juvenile Sukumimus all alone in the forest? Well, to tell you the story, we will go back a few years. It was a stormy night. Spineless mother hears something in the bushes. Trying not to awaken her child, she closely get up and start walking towards the noises. Spineless mother did not return that night, and just like many other, Spineless now had to face the danger of this world alone. Being a young juvenile Sukumimus, Spineless had no choice but to always stay vigilant, no matter how easy it may seem. If he let down his guard, it may cost him everything. Having a tail like a tadpole and a slim snout, he is perfectly adapted to a semi-aquatic life. Sukumimuses are great swimmers, and their diet consists mainly of fish. However, fossil records of them are said to have other dinosaur bones in their stomach. This means that they could have been hunting other dinosaurs when times were more dire. Spineless cannot let the food distract them from letting down his guard. Nearby, a Sarkisuchus let out a broadcast to make sure Everyone knows that he is here. Being an ancient relative of the modern day crocodile, his diet consists of dinosaurs. This is a perfect example of a species with good adaptability, and his kind will continue to live on long after the dinosaurs. His presence alone is enough to make Spineless flee for his life. This place is no longer safe and he will have to move. It is the dry season 
to escape the eyes of larger predators, Spineless now finds himself in thick forest. With the vegetation casting so much shadow, Spineless now how many places to hide should he ever need it. He needs forces him to come out of the shadows, to quell his thirst in a nearby lake. Once again, he cannot afford to let down his guard, even at the smallest of sound. Being a juvenile, there is no way he can outrun an adult version of any dinosaurs. He will have no choice but to hunker down and hope that his camouflage will save him. He will only come out after the noises have settled. In the distance, Spineless sees a young Sarcosuchus swimming in the lake. However, he is far too small to have created the much larger heavier stomp which Spineless heard earlier. There is something bigger around here. Even if that young Sarko is a juvenile, he is way more adapted to the water than Spineless is. Spineless will have no choice to avoid the lake to go into the water with the Sarko. After a long time of walking, there is still no sign of any creature who is capable of making such large stomps. Staying this close to the lake is dangerous. Many creatures will come here to quell their thirst. Spineless is no different. However, many predators wouldn't mind a little food along the drink. Unfortunately, Spineless is about to face his most dangerous foe. The dry season has left the forest ground dry, and it doesn't take much to catch on fire. Forest fires are not uncommon during these times. However, the damage the fire causes in its wake are costly. The creature who wasn't able to escape the flames are now nothing more than nutrition to build up the forest. Spineless were rather lucky. Being a semi-aquatic comes with its perks. While the flame were engulfing the forest, he was hiding in the lake. The burnt forest may be a scorn to the eye now, however, with time it will be able to come back to its former glory. Spineless is not the only creature to have escaped the flames. In the distance he hears large storms which may be the one he heard earlier. A Spinosaurus. This is a distant relative of Spineless. Spinosaurus and Sucumimus share certain traits. However, unlike the Sucumimus, Spinosaurus grows a large sail on its back. While they do have the similarities, Spinosaurus is the biggest Spinosaurid in the family. He is bigger, heavier and far more mightier than Sukumimus. However, being that big also grants Spineless some advantages. On land, Spineless are way too agile 
for the heavy Spinosaurus to catch him. With this in mind, Spineless will stick close to the Spinosaurus, since he is able to provide protection and can serve as a guide for a new location. Sure enough, the Spinosaurus found a new place that Spineless can call home. But experience and intelligence are two different things, and drinking salt water does not equal intelligence. It's a good new location, full of vegetation, and even new neighbors. An adolescent Sarcosuchus. In water, Spineless would be no match. However, on land, Sarcosuchus are slow, awkward, and really not mobile. It would seem as his presence does not please the Spinosaurus. The relationship between Sarcosuchuses and Spinosaurids are not great. Being as they are both adapted to the water, territorial fights are not uncommon. There can be only one king of the water, and with the Spinosaurus mobility on land, the Sarcosuchus will have no other choice but to retreat. As a matter of fact, while Sarcosuchus can deliver the strongest damage output in the game, Spinosaurus can deliver the second strongest damage output in game. Another factor that tips the scale in the Spinosaurus' favor is the combat weight, and that the Spinosaurus has much larger HP bar than the Sarco. Close by, a Thalmodromius flaps his wing in an attempt to land. He might be interested in this lizard that Spineless currently just killed. However, he is hesitating. Spineless is an adolescent Tsukumimus. If he was a juvenile, the Thalmodromius might have went from him. However, the Thalmodromius might be misunderstanding something. He might believe that Spineless is under the protection of the Spinosaurus. The Thalmodromius brain is not too big. Since they share similar appearances, it wouldn't be too far-fetched that the Thalmodromius believe Spineless to be a child of the Spinosaurus. The Sarcosuchus is back, and this time with friends. While the Spinosaurus may have some factors in his favors, there's nothing he can do when they have the greater numbers. He will have no choice but to turn tail and flee. Following this example, Spineless will do the same. Separating himself from the Spinosaurus, Spineless is now alone again. He will now have to hold up his guard again. After traveling a few days, he has reached a location where the forest ends. There are only grand plains as far as the eye can see. Once again, the stench of death permeates through the air. 
a dead concavenator, and a dead ceratosaurus. The killer doesn't seem to be far away either. Curious to who made that noise, Spineless goes to investigate, but only at a safe distance. A Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is the tyrant king of all dinosaurs. Standing neck to neck with the Spinosaurus, there's one big difference with the Spinosaurus and the T-Rex. Unlike the Spinosaurus who is adapted to the water, Tyrannosaurus Rex is well adapted for land. His bulky body is well adapted to take on many large dinosaurs. If Spinosaurus are supposed to be the debated king of the waters, then Tyrannosaurus Rex is the undoubtedly king of the land. There are only so many who would dare challenge a Rex. Spineless is not one of them. Since Tyrannosaurus Rex are better adapted to land than the Spinosaurus, Spineless will have no other choice but to keep his distance. While he may be able to outstand the Rex, there's no way he can outrun the Rex if he should get too close. The only way for Spineless to compete with these guys are up. A long time has passed, and Spineless is now a full-fledged adult. With him being an adult, there is no need for him to stay as vigilant as he did before. However, he is still weak to Sarko attack, or if possible, Spinosaurus attack. With his now fully developed tail and body, he is able to swim faster and longer than he has ever done before. He's no slouch on the land too. Being not as heavy as his cousin the Spinosaurus, he is more mobile on land. Since he is now an adult, he now dares to walk more openly, make more noises, and be more imposing. With his size, there's no doubt that his scientific counterpart was an apex of his time. However, it is time to put that might into a test. An adult Pycnotosaurus. He is a distant relative to the Carnotaurus, only bigger. and more thick-headed. He is not built to be suited for a brawl. He is more of a sprinter, 
and he knows it. Seems like Spineless has still a lot to learn. Pycnotosaurus, despite being sprinters, have a large pool of stamina. Something that Spineless will learn. There's no way he can outstamp the Pycnotosaurus. In an attempt to recover some stamina, the Pycnotosaurus sees an opening. This is a pain that the Spineless will not forget easily. It also seems that the Pignotosaurus understand that he is no match against the raw toughness of Spineless. This is also a lesson for Spineless to be more cunning in his battles. The roaring of the Pycnotosaurus is not just a taunt, it is a trap. The Pycnotosaurus wishes to lure Spineless into Grand Plains. With no trees around, Pycnotosaurus will have a lot more mobility on his side. Spineless know better than to give his enemy the terrarenial advantage. In the end, he was the one who drove off his enemy, and he is content with that. It is time for the test. The test of being an apex. Can he walk around the map while feeling as a king? Can he walk around other apexes and pretend that they're not even there? There's only one way to find out. At the hour of respect, he is now one of the apexes. He has achieved what he and his ancestors has always been meant to achieve. And with that, his mission is done. There's only one last thing left to do. And that is to challenge an actual Apex just to prove your standpoint in the food chain. With less than ideal luck. You know, he lasted longer than I initially expected.